Here oh, we go. Perfect. So we can kick it off. So welcome everyone to the next iteration of the community meeting for the Captain project. We have so many new faces I already said before we started with this meeting. So maybe we can do an introduction round first. So maybe starting topmost in my chat view is Daniel. Would you like to present yourself? Sure. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Daniel. I'm a developer on Trace Tests. Um, we started to using uh, Captain uh, for a, a few days to figure out how we could integrate Captain with Trace Tests, but uh, I will not spoil that. I am a Brazilian developer uh, located in Argentina right now. Thank you for the introduction. Very cool that we have new projects that want to collaborate with us. Then maybe, uh, now we'll butcher the name, sorry. Adnan. That was perfect. Oh, was great. thank you. <laughs> yeah, so I'm Adnan. I, I run DevRel at Trace Test. So um, I'm here to talk about the boring stuff and then regarding the actual fun integration things, um, that's, where Daniel comes in. So yeah, really happy to be here. Thank you. So I guess now, Matthäus. Good morning. Uh, so I'm Matthäus, one, in, one of the engineers of Trace Tests as well. And I'm glad to be here. I'm super happy that uh, we know Captain. <laughs> Very good software. Perfect, thank you. Then in my list, I see uh, Harshal. Did I say it correctly? Yeah, that's correct. So hi, hello everyone. I am Harshal, I am from India. I am a developer at Atlassian and I am looking forward to contributing to Captain as part of GSOC. I explored Captain and went through some of the tutorials and I also uh, went through some demos of the past year projects. So I found it really interesting and Looking forward to learning and contributing to the captain project. Oh, we will touch this point about GSOC in the news later. So then next in the list that I see as a new face is Ritesh. I butcher another name or is my winning streak on record today? We cannot hear you. I don't hear anything, sorry. <clears throat> okay, but meanwhile, you will you are trying to fix the mic. Hey. Let's go over to the agenda. So first of all, thank you everyone to introduce yourself and welcome. So for today, uh, I don't have many news about Captain LTS and the lifecycle toolkit, but because I would like to reserve more time about the trace test integration showcase and also the other demo from Florian about the custom metric. But for TSOC, we are currently working on the application for that. Uh, this is interesting maybe for you, Harshal. And if you want to know about what are possible topics, you can try to reach out to Brad McCoy or Thomas Schutz, which are the administrator for this project. Yeah, yeah, sure. So there is one issue uh, where uh, they have mentioned uh, two of the possible projects and further they will mention the projects when they are decided as and when they are decided. Yeah, but if you have any ideas that you would like to contribute, just talk with them, they're more than willing to support you in then officialize this as a Google Summer they, of Code project. Yeah, actually there's a link in what they want. Um, obviously chat, talk on Slack, but there is a link to, uh, yes, this <coughs> in community, <coughs> excuse me. Um, if you are interested in being a mentor or a mentee, please knock, please put something here about what you're interested in. And yeah. then if you um, have a project in mind, anybody who has a project in mind, you want to create an issue in the appropriate repo for 
you know, whichever project it is and describe in some detail standard issue and then add it to this list. This is going to be their main place where they look to see what's going on, who's there. Um, and if you if you want to be a mentee, uh, you may have an idea of a project. You may have looked and said, gee, you know, KLT could use such and such, and I'd like to do that. Um, and there will also, you can watch here and you will be seeing projects put up by other people too. So does that make sense? Yeah. Okie dokie. So let's jump into the first topic of today, a presentation from Florian about our Captain Custom Metric server. And da -da -da. All right, thank you. Let me find the correct screen to share. And here it is. Let me just make this a little bit bigger. Uh, yeah, today I want to give you a real quick update on what you can look forward to in the next uh, version of the Lifecycle Toolkit, uh, which are the Captain metrics. Uh, so we have added a new custom resource to a project, which is called the Captain metric. And um, with those, you can uh, refer to uh, to uh, evaluation or metric provider. Uh, you might have already seen those in previous versions of uh, the Lifecycle Toolkit where uh, those providers were used by the Captain Evaluation CRDs and uh, Evaluation Controllers. So a provider would be, for example, a, a Prometheus instant, instance uh, in your cluster and in the captain metric you can then define a query that you would like to uh, um, use for retrieving a certain metric from that provider and uh, this the value of this metric will then be updated every uh, periodically based on what you define in the fetch interval seconds right so in this case every five seconds we will retrieve that uh, the result of that query and store it in the status of the cap metric uh, CRD. And for accessing these values, uh, we have multiple ways. So first of all would be, of course, to, to retrieve the, the status of the cap metric custom resource. Um, but then other than that, we also provide a, a specific endpoint for accessing those uh, metrics, which is going to be hosted by default on the 9999 uh, port of the of the service exposed by the lifecycle toolkit. So that's one way. And then finally, um, via a metrics adapter that's now going to be included in the lifecycle toolkit operator, uh, we actually enable it to integrate. Uh, these metrics with the Kubernetes custom metrics API. And that, for example, uh, allows you to refer to these uh, metrics as object metrics within a horizontal pod autoscaler configuration in Kubernetes. So that's pretty cool. So as you can see here, uh, here we have a sample deployment that can scale between one and 10 replicas and the decision um, about scaling up or down will be made based on uh, on our cap metric sample metric. So this would be the way how you can refer to that. And by observing this metric, the horizontal pod autoscaler will then be able to make decisions about scaling up or down. And then finally, uh, if you want to, to retrieve those metric values, uh, using the kubectl library for example you can do so by uh, executing the kubectl get minus minus raw command where you um, point to the custom metrics api and here we have um, added some samples on how to retrieve that so for example here um, yeah maybe that's uh, a unique thing about this api and something that took me at least quite some time to figure out if you want to access this metric 
you have to uh, include it twice in the path. So that's just the way it is. Uh, the custom metrics API format uh, works in Kubernetes. Um, and then, yeah, we also provide uh, label filtering. So you don't necessarily need to, to know the exact name of the metric, but you can use the wildcard selector and then pass a label selector where you can filter by, by certain labels. Um, yeah, that's basically everything I wanted to show you. Uh, are there any questions? So what all can I use these metrics for? Anything? Uh, sorry, what was that? Or what what all can I use this for? Any any metrics at all? Mm -hmm. Are there limits on it or? Uh, basically, uh, in uh, app deployment that's done by the Captain Lifecycle Toolkit, you can uh, also refer to these metrics in the pre and post evaluations. So that, that's one way to use them. And yeah, as I said, you can also use those in the horizontal pod autoscaler or for example, via the using the API endpoint that we added. In addition to that, you can make use of them, for example, also in Keda by pointing to this API. Ah, excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. So the All idea right. behind it is that you have a common API for retrieving metrics from different metric providers. So you can use it either Prometheus, you can add a time trace uh, provider, you can add a Datadog provider or whatever you want in a one single point where you can then consume the metrics from. Yeah, right? maybe exactly. it's worth to mention that the custom metric API endpoint of Dynatrace, uh, sorry, of uh, Kubernetes allows you to only register a single observability platform. So if you want to use Prometheus, Dynatrace, Datadog, New Relic, multiple observability platforms, you cannot. You can only register one at a time. And with the Captain metric server, we abstract this and you can have multiple observability platform that can be used together as a custom metric. Ah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So if there are no further questions, I will hand over to the next one. So it's Daniel and Adnan about trace test. I'm really curious about the presentation. Thank you guys. Thank you. Um, let me first bore you a bit by, by sharing a slide deck because we all love slide decks. <laughs> that one and that one go oh, for a slideshow. Perfect. Let's just go to the beginning here. So yeah, <clears throat> I'll just give you guys a quick rundown of trace test and the problem we want to solve and a quick intro into the pain points of testing right now, just so you know uh, exactly what we want to uh, solve. Now, trace test is basically trace-based testing for a cloud native world. That's the that's the kicker where. Uh, we believe that testing is hard. It has been hard. It, it never really has gotten any easier, especially when you're thinking about testing distributed systems. That's just even harder. Uh, we have a lot, of, a lot of engineers in our team that have uh, both extensive experience with testing, but also with building and developing distributed system and systems. And it's, it's just not simple. It's really hard to do. Uh, and the main pain points that we, we've found out and we've pointed out is that it really hurts when you don't really know when an HTTP transaction fails, especially if you have service-to-service -service communications, if you have requests where one service triggers another and then that triggers a message queue and then that tr triggers something else, you never really know when stuff fails. And it really hurts because you can't really mock that in a test. You, you can't really mock message queues or, or SQS in AWS or anything of that nature. Um, but also the, the last thing that's really, really painful is that you have to write so much code to just set up the testing, just to set up integration tests. You have to write a bunch of code and plumbing and whatever not else to just actually write the test itself. So it's, it's a lot of pain points we want to solve and we really want to make testing. We just want to finally make it awesome. And we want to make it by using distributed traces as test assertions so that the whole basis of trace test is that 
We're using distributed traces from your existing infrastructure, from your existing open telemetry traces or any distributed trace uh, uh, agents that you might have, and then use those uh, spans to run test assertions. Um, so this is something we, we would like to say is the new way of testing where we assert based on these spans, and then we can run tests for the entire distributed system and know exactly what's happening at which point of the system. So a, uh, a really quick rundown of how this works is that as any test executor, you do have a trigger and that trigger triggers a test against your distributed system. So that can be a REST API, it can be gRPC, it doesn't really matter. But the kicker here is that once you get that response back, you not only get the response, you get the distributed trace as well. So trace test will pull your uh, trace data store. It can be pretty much any trace data store you're using from Jaeger to any of the uh, vendors that we were just talking about, like New Relic or whichever else you're using. And then you can write tests and write actual assertions based on the response, but also the entire distributed trace. So you know exactly what's happening. Even if you have multiple microservices, even if you have uh, database calls, et cetera, et cetera, all of that will be uh, visible in the trace itself. And then based on that, those assertions that you do set, you can get test results uh, for your test, uh, test suites. So it's, it's really quite magical. So I reckon with that quick intro, uh, I can hand it over to Daniel and he can actually uh, jump into the real stuff and coding and show you how, how it all works. So um, let me stop the sharing and hand it over to Daniel. Perfect, let me share my screen. Okay. Um, okay, so hi everyone. Um, so uh, to start, uh, how did integration started uh, between tra trace test and captain projects? It started with two issues, one of the, on the lifecycle toolkit project of Captain, and another one on the Captain integrations, uh, where we discussed two things. In one of them, uh, how we could integrate trace tests with Captain, and we, how we could evaluate a service uh, checking the, their open, te open telemetry traces. And later, this discussion evolved to thinking about SLO for traces on on lifecycle toolkit. So uh, what was the idea of that? Uh, thinking, thinking side of trace test and talking with the uh, captain team, so we figured out that we could adapt uh, the trace test CLI to run with captain and start to evaluate services with trace test. Um, the integration works uh, like this. Uh, you have a sequence on captain that triggers uh, a test task. This test task could be seen by the job executor service that, uh, that is configured to run the trace test CLI through a job manifest that I will show to you soon. Um, inside, uh, by doing that, trace test will call, will CLI will call trace test server, do all the testing, all, all the assertions needed, and will answer it is okay for you, the service is right or not. There is a problem and you can, and this validation is broken. Um, an example of that can be seen here. Uh, this is a job config where uh, we will listen to the, the cloud event of test and we are configuring this job to run the trace test CLI. So we have a test definition YAML that is a, I, I am all that uh, says how you can call a service, uh, which type of data we will pass to the service, and which validations we will, we will do on the, on, on the traces of this API. So for instance, um, I'm using an uh, API called Poker Shop. Let me show you here. That, um, that has a use case called that uh, it's our wrapper on the Poke API. Um, nowadays, it has they it has actions to uh, register Pokemons and import Pokemons inside the, their data, its database. Um, on the import uh, use case, we have two uh, use cases split uh, in two tests. Um, one of is uh, the API call, 
that cows uh, that says, I want to import a Pokemon. Um, they, if I receive this information and send to one HabKMQ, uh, saying, uh, here is a sync call to, to import a Pokemon. Sorry, folks. Uh, I have a co-pilot right now. That's my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> That's mm -hmm. with us. Um, and I said Pokemon, so <laughs> this is a problem. Uh -huh. um, another part that is a worker uh, that uh, that does the async process behind the curtains, uh, uh, checking on Poke API if everything is fine. If everything is fine, uh, it saves the Pokemon on our database. Um, it, it is finished. Uh, how we can use this this case? Uh, we can go to Captain. Right now, we registered some projects on it. One of them is called Trace Test Integration Poke Shop. On this uh, project, we have a service called Poke Shop and a sequence called Validate Poke Shop that I can enter on it and I can trigger this sequence right now. So I choose the workshop service, the production environment, run the validate workshops step. And in a few minutes, we will start to run trace tests inside Captain. What happens behind the curtains is th that we call internally uh, the workshop, the trace test API. Uh, the trace test API will start a run like this. In this run, it will happen what Adnan said to you. Uh, we will uh, trigger this endpoint on the Poke API with this data. It will return a data, but also a trace on what is happening behind the scenes. If uh, we see closer, we have a set of traces from the API part receiving the Pokemon data and queuing a message to the, to the worker. And we have also the trace of uh, the queuing this message and all the stuff that the worker does behind the scenes. Uh, this is pretty cool because uh, with one simple API call, we could test, uh, evaluate, evaluate the, entire, the entire process of, the, of importing a Pokemon, which is really hard to do in a, in a test, integration test. And by doing that, we can uh, add some, some assertions on this trace to check if we are queuing a message correctly, if we are posting uh, on the API correctly, and if the worker is working fine. The queuing a message, calling Poke API, and expecting the, that Poke API is, is okay, and if the, the data was persistent on the database. So uh, this is a, a good because of that. So, uh, for this test is that, I, I had another test about <laughs> about open telemetry, but I will I will skip this because uh, because of time. Uh, what I want to just say, uh, show to you after that is just so we can import a test definition on on Captain, run with trace test CLI, and with that we can evaluate a service on on Captain. Yeah. This is it, folks. Uh, do you have any questions? How was your experience in developing such an integration with Captain? Is the documentation good enough? Do we need to improve somewhere to explain better stuff, or uh, was it straightforward for you? It was. Uh, I had mixed feelings. Uh, for for example, for for the job execution engine, the job execution service, it was fine. I could I could figure out how do we, uh, I could do the things and and use directly on on Captain. I, with the documentation, I also was uh, able to uh, de deploy a captain in my Kubernetes cluster and start to do the test. But there are some some parts that I needed to customize because or I image was missing or a version was different. But uh, later I can I, I can point to you this point and open an PR to to help you with this documentation. But the, the overall was fine. Okay, thank you very much, especially for providing the PR to <laughs> improve the situation for the rest of the community.
any other question from the rest of the audience? Okay, then I will jump to the next topic. Actually, I have one more question before you go on. Um, is this going to be listed on the Captain Integrations page? Uh, yes, this is the one, uh, something that I want to, to talk with you. Uh, how we can do that? Uh, we have a documentation for that. And probably, um, if you wanted, I can open an PR to, uh, to provide more data to list, to, to list on there. Is it here? Or in country, I forgot now. Uh, in contrib. <clears throat> Here there is this small get to start documentation. Uh, I will add it to the document agenda. And thank you Perfect. for the support. Then I have a general topic to discuss with the community. If we would have some Elm charts also for the lifecycle toolkit, where this Helm chart should live, should we use the current Helm repository that we have for Captain LTS and have a sub package there, or would the community prefer a different repository? I know that Andre, you have some opinions on that? Um, yeah, actually, not me, but our colleague Moritz um, discovered that if we want to release, for example, KLT together with the captain charts uh, from the current existing Helm Charms repository, then it might be problematic due to um, arti Artifact Hub. Um, yeah, we didn't find yet an existing example where uh, two different Helm charts are released from one repository. Um, we're not 100% sure it needs a little bit more research, but the easiest way would be definitely to have two different repositories for Captain LTS and Captain Lifecycle Toolkit. Someone else has other opinions, feedback? Okay, looks like no. Um, and then maybe, uh, is this the presentation that you showed us? Perfect. Yeah, exactly. let me, I, I can explain as well. Um, yeah, that's the, uh, the official documentation or the trace test documentation. So uh, we'll go ahead and use that to provide the official ones, uh, the official documentation on the captain side as well, just so we can get that get that going as well. Um, so the, the link you shared for the captain contrib, that's all we need. There is no, no more specifics we need to go into to get it. Cool. Um, yeah, we'll also make sure that we got, we get the integration on our website as well. So we have both websites and documentation going. So we have a landing page for that. Um, and yeah, I think it would be also super cool if we can get this recording and put that on a website as well, just for, for reference, if people want to go in and check it out, I think that would be cool. Yeah, for sure. We will publish the recording as soon as the meeting ends. Zoom usually takes a while, uh, but then we will publish them on YouTube, usually in our Captain YouTube channel. Are you in the Captain Slack or in the CNCF Slack? The Adan? Captain, we, we're all in the, yeah, the whole Tracers team is in the Captain Slack. So Okay, perfect. So I will ping you as soon as the video is out. So I can Perfect. share it with you. Perfect. Okie dokie. Then we are running out of items from the agenda. So I think we can close the meeting a bit earlier. Thank you a lot, especially to the trace test team. By the way, uh, what was the other tool that you you have from Cube Shop, the Cube test? 
very cool tool. I really like it. <laughs> Great work there. That's actually uh, a teaser. So you guys know we're going to integrate with them as well very, very shortly. So yeah, you, you eventually you'll be able to use both uh, with Captain as well. So it's going to be perfect. perfect. Yeah, because I also did something with that where I was using the job executor to call via curl uh, uh, <clears throat> a test run, basically, to trigger then a K6 tester. That's actually coming as well. So I don't want to be. Oh, uh, okay. Premature, <laughs> but like, we're, yeah, we, yeah, you will know. You will know. So we're, we're doing K6 as well. So it's coming up as well. Okay. So we'll stay tuned. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Actually, interesting. Somebody who couldn't be here, Andres, who's one of our top people, of course, um, was just talking a blog post. He's been talking to people. I think he's doing, but the notion that testing has moved far, moved to the right, that it, you know, there was so many microservices that this is becoming a bigger and bigger problem. I'm sitting there. Oh God, it's too bad he wasn't here for this, but he will watch the recording later. Oh, cool. Yeah, regarding that, uh, would you would you be up for writing a uh, blog post just to announce the integration? Like, I would love to work with somebody from your team uh, yes. to get that going as well. I just I, like just to make it official. I, I think that would, like it's going to obviously help the documentation if we if we do a blog post, but I think it it would be very helpful just for reach. Yeah, I can make you create a link with you and Andy from the captain team, which is our blog post aficionados, the better of us in writing blog posts. Mm -hmm. So you can maybe cook something together. Yeah, let me just add that in and write blog post announcement. And yeah, we can just discuss in Slack. Perfect. Wonderful. Perfect. Oh, sorry. Oh, fix it. Okay. Thank you very much. That was a very nice community meeting. Have a great day, everyone, and talk to you in the next iteration. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you. See you.